What up players, it's Warboss Tap in this mud. Today I've got a Warboss tutorial on how to paint a Doom Wheel. This is the finished Doom Wheel. Um, and if you follow this guide, then you should pretty much have the same results that I did. And um, let me know if you have any questions. The only thing I'm not even uh, really able to do is show you how I painted the banner just because um, it's a lot of steps. I don't have a tripod or anything to um, to set my camera to be able to make it steady but um, I do tell you the colors that I use then hopefully you can get an idea of you know how I freehanded it. If you have any questions just let me know and I'll, I'll explain a little bit further but this is what the finished model is gonna look like so follow along and um, this is gonna be quite a long one because there are a lot of steps to it um, and it starts off in their in the disassembled um, sub assemblies so um, I hope you enjoy it I hope you find some inspiration and some some enjoyment out of this video it took me a long time to get done all the way through but but I'm really happy with it like I said and uh, I think the finished product speaks for itself so enjoy the rest of the video and we'll see you in the next one What up players, welcome to my Warboss tutorial how to paint a Skaven Doom Wheel for the Warhammer Fantasy Battles game for the Skaven Army. As you can see, I've got my 11 sub-assemblies of this machine contraption here. I've got the two hamster wheels, two gear thingies that are going to secure the wheels to the, um, to the main frame. We've got the periscope, which is, I think, the coolest piece of the model. A little periscope that allows the pilot to see where he's going. Two wheel or, or spiky bit, bits with blades that are on the side. It also has little warp stone amps, amplifiers on the sides, or generators, or whatever you call them. Two things of rats to go into the wheel to make it look like hamster wheels. And those are going to be a lot of fun to paint. We've also got the crewmen on the back operating these bellows. And then we've got the big sub-assembly here that has the warp stone generator at the front, the, the pilot, the warp lock engineer, the banner, and um, the little platform in the back with the little um, furnace, steam furnace, for the, the guys, the crewmen on the back to be operating, and the little rear wheel. So for this model, I'm going to be using the Games Workshop article online, how to assemble stage by stage and paint a Skaven Doom Wheel. So the first step it says after assembly when you get to the part of the article that talks about painting is that you paint all the wood pieces. So I'm looking at these, oh sorry, let's get this focus, wooden planks on the sides of the wheel for the, for the center. I'm going to be painting all the wooden pieces. Anything that you find this wooden grain on is I would assume a wooden piece for the model. So all the wood planks here as well as the wooden plank on the back that the crewman stands on and like here inside the wheel we've got wood there planks on the inside the rear wheel I believe that's it if I find anything else while going over the model then I will let you know but that looks like it should be it mostly this is a, a metal metallics and gears coppers and gold kind of model so the wooden planks, we're going to be painting a mixture, one-to-one, -one, of Citadel colors, bestial brown and fortress gray. So an even mix, mix both of those together in equal parts, and that is going to be your base coat for the wheels. So I'm going to do that, and I'll show you what it looks like when we get back. Alright, so after the first application of one-to-one, -one, even mixture of bestial brown and fortress gray, the next step we're going to do is we're going to dry brush onto the wood a one to two mix so you're gonna use whatever however much you use fortress gray you're gonna use half about that much to mix bestial brown and mix it up all together and then that's gonna be a lighter color because it has more fortress gray in it more lightness so you're going to dry brush that now onto all of the wood so hopefully it, it should pick up more of the grain of the wood and give you a really nice looking um, finish so two to one fortress gray to bestial brown and I will show you what that looks like when we come back. 
So at this point, your wood and the grain of the wood should be picked out just a little bit. As you can see here, the lighter color is picked out. You still got a little bit of that base color in the recesses, but this is a little close-up of what your wood should look like on your doom wheel. So the next thing is we're going to highlight up with very, very lightly pure fortress gray. So no bestial brown. It's just going to pick up really lightly on the top. For this, you really want just a little bit of paint on the brush. When you dip your brush into the fortress gray paint, you really want to get like 90% of it off so that it's just a really light dusting. Or maybe not 90, maybe like 80 to 90% of it off. So it's just a really light dusting on top of what you've already worked on. You don't want it to obscure all of the detail or uh, make the detail look too stark from the color underneath. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get back. Okay, so here's a little bit about what your wood should look like. It's got that color still deep in the recesses, but you do have that fortress gray dusting over it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly pick some board planks to give them a very decrepit um, look. And so you just randomly pick out a couple of these plates. Woo! And the colors that you're going to be painting them, you're actually going to be painting them with a wash of one of the following colors. So what that means is that one part paint to, I want to say like a good five to six parts water, depending on how much water you use. Um, you just kind of want it, want the want the paint to kind of color and stain the wood, but still have a little bit of the, a little bit of the, the this color showing through. Okay, and again, you don't want to do all of them. You just want to randomly pick different planks of wood to give them the colors. And these are the four different colors you're going to be using. Scorched brown, and I'll turn them over so you can kind of see a little bit of what the colors look like. Dark flesh, graveyard earth, okay, you can't really color this, uh, turn this one around, but as you can kind of see what it looks like. And catechin green. So again, you're going to be mixing these separately with water, really wa um, watering them down and then you're going to be painting individual planks of wood to to stain them give them a decrepit look all right so I'm gonna go do that and I'll show you what that looks like in just a bit okay so now that we've got all our different rainbow colors on our wheels and onto the main part of our uh, wooden planking on the back, back platform of the doom wheel itself we're gonna wash everything with Devlin mud and tie all the colors together. So Devlin mud onto all the wood pieces and uh, that's gonna be just about all except for picking out the highlights in metal. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. We might as well do that now so that uh, it saves me a clip of having to render and everything. So after you wash both wheels and any other wood parts with Devlin mud, you're going to paint on the metal bits and studs with bolt gun metal. So I will show you what all that looks like when we get back to this in the next clip and move on to uh, the next part of painting our doom wheel. Alright, so now the next thing after doing the wood that you are going to do is the dark bronze metal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the base coat to most of the metallics. You want to leave some stuff out for, for the gold. We're also going to be painting gold and a silver sort of color. So I, I painted most of the frame, but I left some things in there, uh, primered, gray primered state, just because I want to pick those out later for the detail. But most of the other metal stuff I painted as this dark bronze color. And what we're actually going to use, oh, look at that mold line. I got to clean that up. What we're actually going to use for this dark bronze color, as you can see, I did, did it on the wheels here. We're going to use a three color mixture with scorched brown, uh, tin bits, and dwarf bronze. So these are the three colors you're going to be mixing together. Mix them together equally and you get this really dark, almost tin bits, but a little bit brighter, a little bit redder and a little bit with uh, some just a little touch of gold in it, kind of. It's not as dark as, as tin bits is, but you get that kind of color and you just want to cover all the metal the, the dark bronze metal bits on your models or your sub assemblies of the model. Okay, so I got some on the wire here on the cords, um, I got some on the, the silver blade, what's going to be silver. But most things like these conductors here in the back of the warp stone, uh, this lightning bolt looking blade thing, I'm going to leave for now because I plan on doing that in gold later. 
Okay, so after you base them in this dark, dirty bronze color, the next thing you're going to do is you are going to paint all of the bronze with a Devlin mud wash just like you did for the wheels. So as you can see what it did to the wheels, the colors on the wheels, is that it really tied all the colors together, made them really dark and dirty. And that's the effect that we're going for. The same effect that we have with all of the wood coloring on the wheels. We're going for the same thing, um, but even darker for the dark bronze. We're gonna tie all that together. Okay, so that's, again, that is Devlin Mud. Citadel wash color, here we go. And once we apply that, I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll get on to some highlighting. <laughs> All right, so after painting the Devlin mud onto the metallics, we're gonna highlight the metallics. And this is a two-step process. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to create little nicks on all the edges of the metals by using dwarf bronze. And this is kind of how it looks. You just wanna edge and splotch. Stop text messaging me. You wanna splotch around the edges uh, very randomly, kinda of like you know how chipped paint and rust will form with dwarf bronze. And then you wanna go over that with chainmail. And this is gonna pop out a lot from the from the color of the dark, dirty bronze, and that's kinda of what we want. So that's what I did for these for the two wheels, and so this is the kind of effect that you get. You want to do it with all this dark bronze metallic colors. And let's see how it looks on the center sub assembly. There we go. So, very random, very, very, um, you know, you just want to splotch it. You don't want to make it look like there's any kind of a pattern to it. really weathered and beaten up. Okay, so once you're done with that, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna do verdigris, which is the oxidization of the metals, and it comes out as this very bluish green, greenish blue kind of teal color. So what we're gonna do is we are going to mix together two colors and we're gonna apply those into the recesses. It's gonna be, be quiet, cat. It's gonna be hawk turquoise, which is what you see here, as well as dark angels green. You're gonna mix that together, you're gonna to water it down, and then you are going to apply the wash, uh, what hopefully should be the same consistency of a wash, right into all of the recesses of the model. So try not to, pull it or, or, or paint it onto any of the flat areas. Really try to go for where the nut, the nuts and the bolts and the rivets and the... Be quiet! And... Oh, you damn cat! And all of that stuff is um, rivets. Go for the metal rivets. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and I will show you what that looks like when that step is done. And also feed my cat. Okay, so all of my dark bronze has been painted with a little bit of this verdigris color. And um, as you can see with the main sub-assembly here, really makes it look a lot more realistic and authentic that, that you've got that aging verdigris effect on all of the dark bronze. So really cool stuff. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint all the metallic areas with bolt gun metal. And by metallic areas, what I mean are, for example, the blades here at the front of that, as well as, uh, we're gonna paint that gold, so that's nothing for now, as well as the periscope. I'm gonna paint the periscope completely bolt gun metal, and um, that's gonna be gold. Uh, here, the blades on the front of the main sub-assembly, that's gonna be gold. So, yeah, I think that's it. So, and, and like anything like metal and stuff on the crew or bronze on the crew, don't, don't worry about those. We'll get to those when we um, actually get to the those models. 
but right now let's just paint anything that you want to be in silver in Volt Gunmetal. Alright, after painting all of the silver metallics on in Volt Gunmetal, what we did was we dulled it down with a wash of Devlin Mud. We also painted all of the warp stone bits with Dark Angels Green. So you've got five of them on the machine. This huge one right here in the center of the steering column, the two over here at the front, and the two little ones on the side generating the, um, the, the side of the blades on each side of the wheel. So Devlin mud washes usually take a long time for all the silver metallics because um, I've noticed because every time I've tried to um, get some, some of it on and wait for it to dry, uh, sometimes it would rub off or I would accidentally brush it with my finger and um, it, would, it would come off. So, so just be careful that when you are washing your silver metallics with Devlin mud that you give it a good amount of time. So what I've done was while I was waiting for it to dry, I painted the warp stone. And again, the base color for that is dark angels green. The next thing we're going to do after the Devlin mud has dried completely, we are going to highlight some the edges of the silver metallics with bolt gun metal and then again with chain mail. So those are the two metallic colors that we are going to highlight up the sides. And as soon as that's done, we're going to get started with our um, with, with the actual rust effect for the blades. So again, we're highlighting back up with chain mail the sides of the silver metallics and I'll see you when we get started on the rust. So after the highlights, the chainmail uh, highlights, your rusted metal blade should look something like this and you can stop there, however I'm going to get in the, uh, get them a little bit rusted looking so I'm going to show you the method for putting rust onto your blades. So you're going to need bestial brown, either macarius solar orange or blazing orange and vomit brown to make the rust and then we're going to use a little bit of micro silver at the very end. So the first thing you want to do is stipple on bestial brown and uh, I use a uh, dry brush or I think it's a small dry brush and I just um, put some paint on and then I lightly stipple like like that it's like you're just basically like almost stabbing it with um, a little bit of the paint you, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush and sorry my brush is is still covered with paint I just finished doing this um, doing this technique so you want to start with bistro brown and then you're gonna stipple over the bistro brown macarius solar orange and then you're actually gonna mix a one-to-one -one mix of vomit brown and macarius solar orange for the last um, application and so your blades should look something like this at the end and as you can see, it's you've got the darker bestial brown underneath. There, that's a little bit better. And then you've got the lighter orange flaking on the top of it. Then what you're going to do after that is you're just going to take your mithril silver and you're going to do a fine edge highlight on all the edges. So like at the tops where the blades um, and at the bottom where the blade is, the serrated edges. Like any anywhere you see a hard edge and then that'll really make that turn out really nice. So I'm going to do that now for all of my blades, the ones included on the front of the ram of the doom wheel and then I will show you what that looks like when we come back. Alright so here's the metal blades with the rust effect and the chipping added on and as you can see I did it to these two blades here as well as the blades at the front of the uh, machine. I'm gonna keep the periscope silver though I'm probably gonna just highlight it up the edges with either micro silver or chain mail uh, just to break it up when the periscope eventually goes in. The next thing we're going to do is focus on the gold and for the gold I'm going to paint just like the Skaven Doom Wheel model the um, the arches that are next to the warp stone generators. I'm going to paint this little um, blade thing here at the front and also the arches on each side of the shh, these generators on the sides of my Doom Wheel as well. And um, to do that, I'm going to need four colors, which is Scorched Brown, Shining Gold, Chaos Black, and Burnished Gold. So 
wherever you decide to paint the gold, this is how you're going to paint it. First, you're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of scorched brown and shining gold, just kind of as a base coat. And then you're going to wash that with a one-to-one -one mix of scorched brown and chaos black, and you're going to put that into the recesses. Another good alternative would be um, bad at black mixed with Devlin mud. But the website on GW says to use these two since you've already got those colors out. Then you're going to layer up with shining gold. And finally, you're going to highlight with pure burnished gold. And a mix for burnished gold, if you don't have it, would be just shining gold with micro silver or chain mail. Uh, just maybe like two, two parts shining gold to one part of the silver. Because you still want to get a, a gold tinge, but um, you want it to be really bright and shiny. And then uh, after that, you're going to highlight up uh, if you want at that point. You don't have to, but it's the website says to use pure mithril silver to highlight up the edges of all your gold pieces. And um, finally, the last thing is you're going to actually wash down the metal with a really, really thin layer of Thraka Green, and I'm almost out of this one, so I've got another bottle lying around. But what that's going to do is it's going to take it down so that the color isn't as bright and poppy, and it also makes it look a little more uh, like decaying gold, and um, you kind of want that sickly color. Um, so again, that's washed down, uh, watered down Thraka Green. You want to wash the gold with that. Okay, so that's uh, a uh, a lot of steps for the gold, but what it's going to do is it's going to make it pop out the rest of the uh, out from the rest of the model, which is almost primarily wood and that dark, dark bronze. So um, that gold is going to really pop once you once you get it done right. So I'm going to do that now, and I'll show you what it looks like on the model when we get back in the next part. Okay, so I finished up the gold. Now I got to work on the the wires and the the warp stone. Wires were really easy, I just did Chaos Black, and um, if you look at the Games Workshop article on how to paint this thing, they go into all these crazy recipes about mixing in um, commando khaki and rotting flesh in different amounts to, to, to highlight um, you know, the areas of the wires that the light reflects off of, but it really just looks like uh, gray, like they took some like Codex Gray and mixed uh, lightly feathered it in, so if you want to do a Codex Gray or some Fortress Gray, and just like highlight the edges where the light would reflect off of, then you can do that. Um, but yeah, the gold looks really great with the burnished gold, the mithril silver highlights, and the really, really light glaze of, of Thraka green. So let me show you what I did for the warp stone. You're gonna need these following colors, uh, chaos black, like I said, for the, for the wires. And then for the warp stone, you're gonna use dark angels green, rotting flesh, and these are going to be your main two colors that you're going to mix rotting flesh into the Dark Angels green in increasing amounts, okay? And um, I went with three levels or three layers of really light dry brushes and highlights on the raised edges. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do a really light glaze of sunburst yellow. So mix a lot of water into the sunburst yellow and then just lightly um, paint it onto the warp stone and what I did was I painted it onto the sides of the warp stone that are um, closer to the light or closer to where the energy is focused out of um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second and then you wash all of it with rocker green so here is the warp stone that I came up with and you'll notice that the further back the warp stone is the darker it is and then the further to the front, the lighter it gets, which is like the, the um, you know, all of the energy focusing towards the front, like it's about to zap straight forward. You could also see that with these two um, warp stone pieces on the sides, where I left the base kind of dark, showing a lot of the dark angels green, and then as it gets further towards the tip, it gets lighter and lighter. And like I said, you do that with rotting flesh mixed into the Dark Angel's green, and don't worry if it gets too powdery or white or, or light near the tips because, like I said, the, that sunburst yellow glaze is going to really um, blend the highlights into the baser, the base colors lower down, and it's really going to focus it and make it look really nice. Okay, so once you're done with the warp stone, the wires, all the metallics are done, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get focused on the driver. And to get started on the driver, 
I am going to need Bolt Gun Metal and Gretchen Green, Scorched Brown, Talarn Flesh, Chaos Black, and Dark Angels Green. And I'm just reading it off of the step-by-step -step article on gamesworkshop.com. So I'm gonna go grab those colors and I will paint them onto the base and then uh, we'll paint the base colors onto this guy, I mean, and then I'll show you what he looks like with those on. And um, scab red for the cloak. Okay. Okay, so my crewman now has the base colors on. So what I'm gonna do now is we're going to add the second level of coloring to him. Before I do, let me just show you what I did with the, um, the skin. Tile Iron Flesh, I painted the arms, the ear, and the snout. There you go, there you can kind of see it. Um, but those are the only parts of flesh that I could really find on him. The rest were just fur, which is uh, scorched brown, as you just saw. So the next thing when I'm, the next level of painting I'm going to do for the crewman is I'm going to wash the hood with a mix of scab red and chaos black into the recesses. You could also do if you're just not really interested in this part, you could just do a um, bad at black wash into the recesses as well. The armor you're going to highlight with chain mail, and the armor is the plating underneath the the robes, and they're in the middle, and they're on his feet. Then the robe, I couldn't find Gretchen Green. I, I had a Gretchen Green, couldn't find it, so I just painted up with painted it with rotting flesh, which is the next layer, anyways. So both sides, rotting flesh. And then what else did I do, or what else are you going to do? You're going to layer on the scorched brown fur, you're going to layer up with bestial brown to give it a lighter reddish brown. The flesh you're going to wash with ogre and flesh wash. The gloves and belt you're going to highlight with a mix of codex gray and chaos black. And those are on the ends or where you see the, the light reflecting off of the, off of the leather. And finally the islands, you're going to start highlighting the islands in the center with snot green. Okay, so I'm gonna go do all of that, and then I will show you my progress in the next step. Okay, so here's our model at this point. As you can see, we've got a little bit more detailed and a um, little bit more of the wash and uh, some of the details like on the gloves. The codex gray really helps to make it look like the light is reflecting off of the leather gloves. So the, ne uh, the next step we're gonna do at this point is we are going to use a one-to-one -one mix of blood red and scab red and that is going to be used to highlight up the red cloak. Devlin mud, we're going to use a wash of Devlin mud over the armor pieces to uh, dull them down. Bleach bone, we're going to use to highlight up the, the uh, robe around his legs. Bestial brown and dwarf flesh, we're going to mix that one-to-one -one, and we are going to use that to highlight up the fur. The dark, uh, the dark brown fur. Codex Gray, we're going to continue highlighting up the gloves. Talarn Flesh is going to be used to highlight the skin parts um, that's not covered in fur. And Scorpion Green is going to be used for the eye lenses. So I'm going to apply that next, and then when we come back, I will show you what that looks like on the model. Okay, we are just about done with our pilot now. I'm going to take you through the last steps that you'll need to follow in order to finish him off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight the red part of his hood with a uh, even uh, division of scab red, blood red, and the Games Workshop website says vomit brown, but I couldn't find my vomit brown, so I've got bubonic brown, which hopefully is, you know, kind of comparable. Then the armor you are going to highlight with Mithril Silver, okay, so do some good edge highlighting. You're going to wash the robe with a mix of Scorched Brown and Chaos Black, but um, I decided to just use a heavy application of Devlin Mud. Then you are going to um, highlight the fur with... Hello Kitty! Hello Kitty! No, I'm making my video. You're going to highlight the fur with uh, Pure dwar Dwarf Flesh which is right over here. And then for the actual flesh, you're going to layer a mix of Talarn flesh and then bleached bone. And then you're gonna highlight off of, up of that with a mixture of one-to-one -one 
Bleached Bone and Skull White. And all of these mixes are usually one-to-one -one unless I um, tell you any different. I, and again, I'm just going off the GW website. The gloves and the belt you're going to highlight with, it says Rotting Flesh um, to give it, I guess, this... And I, I tried to do a little bit of it, um, like a lighter, not, not as black and white highlight, but I found that going back over with Codex Grey really uh, is, is a lot cleaner and um, I didn't like the way the rotting flesh turned out, so I, I went back over with some. Okay, for this last highlight, you can see that I already did it. The lightest color rat gets a bleached bone highlight. The middle brown rat gets a highlight of Commando Kaki. And the black rat gets Codex Grey highlights. When you're done with that, you're going to paint the tails and the faces with Talarn Flesh. Um, the GW website says all the skin, so like I guess that would mean feet and paws too, but I decided that I wanted the focal point to be the faces and the tail, so I, I, I left the feet um, in their original sc scorched brown coloring. So I'm going to paint the flesh on, of the faces and the tails onto these guys, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to apply an Ogren flesh wash onto the flesh, onto all of the, the skin parts to, to tie it all down. So I'll see you when that's done. Okay, so after the Ogren wash dries, and after you highlight them back up with Talarn flesh, you are going to dot in their eyeballs with Skull White, and then you're going to give them little pupils with little tiny dots of Chaos Black at the front. Some of them came out a little better than the others, but it is pretty late, I'm getting kind of tired, and I figure, you know, how many people are really going to see these rats? Um, so, running around in their little hamster wheels. So I'm pr I am pretty proud of them, and what I got accomplished. <laughs> so those are the rats. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the banners, or the banner on the, um, on the top of the doom wheel. So what I did was I put a mix of Camry Brown, and uh, Deneb Stone, one-to-one -one mix, and then I painted it on the front end of the banner, which I'm going to show you in a bit, and then I used straight scab red for the back end, so that kind of matches with the, with the driver. So the first coat is drying, I'm going to do another coat of scab red on the back here, and I also painted Dark Angel's Green here on this little tassel up at the top. So... I broke the banner into half. Oops. And the plan is following the Skaven um, banner on the Games Workshop website, I'm gonna put triangle checks into the front uh, where this is broken up, and then I'm going to see if I can freehand either the uh, Skaven symbol here on the large surface area or even the um, Skaven design on the, the website for the model that that would be awesome so this is going to be kind of the uh the design that i'm going to try to copy um so wish me luck and i'll see you when i <laughs> when i've finished with the results of whatever that is all right so here is my finished banner I used Deneb Stone for the white creamy parts and Scab Red, like I said, with a bad black wash for the red. I made these dagged patterns. Uh, I copied the Games Workshop um, heavy metal one, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I put a simple horned rat sign on that side because I really wanted to go to town with this side. I made three rows of dag patterns, some sigils and little Skaven markings, and this giant ornamental blazing sun looking thing. So for that, I had a lot of fun painting it. It was just a scab red circle with chaos black tendrils sneaking out from it. And I painted the center sigil with denim stone and then I painted codex gray on the inside to make it look a little different. So there's my banner, really happy with it. I'm gonna probably try to highlight up the tassel a little bit, maybe with some snot green to make it look just a little bit brighter and pop out just a little bit more. Um, at this point, the website says to start assembling the model, but it didn't explain how to paint the rear crewman. So I'm gonna go and do that now just based on what it looks like 
the, the Games Workshop Heavy Metal color scheme is. So it looks like the sleeves are going to be scorched brown, the hood is going to be calfin brown, and the robes are going to be, gosh, that looks like Adeptus Battle Gray. Yeah, I'm going to go with that and um, everything else, like the flesh for the hands and the tails, uh, the tail looks like it's going to be the same as the scheme for the rest, uh, for, for the pilot. So I'm, I'm going to paint this guy up and um, without a, any kind of guide and just kind of free, um, just kind of freely do it and, and see, let, let's see what, what he looks like when, when we're done. Okay, so I finished painting up the uh, bellows guy. Let's talk about what colors I used. I used Camry Brown for the bellows and the shoes. I used Bolt Gun Metal for this wire here and for the actual bellows itself. For the tail, I or this uh, gold piece on the tail, I did shiny gold and then burnished gold, nice and simple. For the skin on the hands, the tail, and the face, I used Talarn Flesh, then I washed with Ogre and Flesh, and then I highlighted up with Talarn Flesh and actually Codex Gray. And I think the gray adds a nice paleness to it that that you don't get when you just use Talarn Flesh and warmer colors like Denim Stone to, to highlight up. The gray kind of washes it out, makes it seem a little pale, and I, I, I kind of like that. For the robes, I used Carrot and Granite, and then I washed that with Bad Eye Black, and then I highlighted the edges up with Commando Khaki. The belt is Camry Brown. The um, the hood is Calthin Brown, washed with Bad Eye Black, and then the edges highlighted up with Bleached Bone. And I think that makes a very nice, good edge highlight for it. Kind of makes it pop, and um, makes it look nice and nice and warm too. I, I use the same colors, Calthin Brown, and then um, Bleached Bone for the bracers and the bandages on the arms. The teeth is just skull white. I blacked out the mouth with chaos black on the inside. And then for the horns, I did Adeptus Battle Gray. And then I highlighted that up with Codex Gray and then Fortress Gray to give it a, these kind of like a bony, spiky protrusion kind of colors. So that is it. That's the last part of the Doom Wheel that I've had to paint. And I'm super excited because now we're going to go on to the actual assembly of the Doom Wheel. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the main sub-assembly, the, the, the big middle part, the cockpit, and the, the banner section. And we're actually going to add our two wheels, <laughs> our two funyuns on. So um, I'm going to line those up, pop them in, into place, and then I'm going to glue them. And then we will actually, before I, I, I uh, go away, I'm going to tell you what, how we're going to secure. We're going to use these two outer cog um, bracer setting things and put those on either side in the back. Once the big metal funyun or big wooden funyuns are in, we're going to connect the cog pieces to the back over here. So I'm going to do that and then we will move on after that. Okay, so as I was waiting for the glue to dry, I realized that I had not painted because there was no instructions on the GW website on how to paint the little flask at the side of the driver. So I decided to paint it up like it was warp stone. So what I did was I base coated dark angels green and then I blended in with a little bit of snot green and then some rotting flesh and finally some skull white. And then I um, gave it a nice glossy gloss varnish. Then I realized that because I was looking at the next step in the assembly section, I didn't paint the periscope yet the lens and um, in the in the tutorial it's painted this red color so I decided to copy it and so what I used was it, it doesn't say how to do it though so I'm gonna tell you how I painted it I used scab red first well first I painted the entire lens black and then I use scab red to paint this little crescent shape on like a uh, I was basically painting like a big fat U on the bottom side of the of the periscope and then I highlighted that with blood red, then blazing orange, and then you can see this really fine line of dwarf flesh followed by skull white. And I also used skull white to put a little dot in the black area at the top. And then I base coated that in gloss varnish as well. So, so we're going to glue the periscope now into this little hole above the steering column. 
And then after that, we are going to glue the two blades on either side of the wheels. But before that, though, um, we're going to glue in the little rats that are running on the hamster wheel. Okay, so it's actually, um, rats are actually gonna be the first thing we're gonna put into the hamster wheel. And then we're going to glue in the periscope, and then we're gonna glue the two blades with the warp stone conduits on either side of the wheels. And that should almost be it, except for the crewman, so I'll show you what all that looks like in the next part of the video. Okay, the last thing is to glue the rear crewman in place. You see he's got this little locator button that fits into the boiler, so we're just gonna pop that in, put a little bit of glue uh, in there, and on the bottom of his two shoes, and then that should be enough to secure him to the back platform. So do that, and then we will wrap up with our finished Doom Wheel. Oh my gosh, this video is so long! And there you have it, the culmination of a couple of weeks of work, or uh, days, at least a week of work. I'm really happy with the way that the model turned out. Um, doing everything in sub-assemblies was different for me, but allowed me to paint inside of all of the little details that I never would have been able to get otherwise. Everything is painted, there's like no angle that you can turn and not see something on the inside painted, so in that way it really is great to do the painting in sub-assemblies for big complicated models like this. I hope you've enjoyed this video, thank you for watching all the way, or fast forwarding it to this point to see what the finished model looks like. I am really um, excited to get this video up, so I'm going to start uploading it now, and um, I'm really happy with this model. I think it's fantastic, I think it's got a lot of character, and um, the whole Skaven range, this new Skaven range is really really fantastic when it comes to all of the little characterful things that you can find when you're looking at the model for the second, third, fourth time even. And um, I hope that I was able to um, to show you a little bit of how great this model is and hopefully to inspire you to paint your own Doom Wheel if you have one or to get one and paint one up and, um, and enjoy it for yourself. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.